my channel so today we're doing some prep work for another carving project i want to try so i had some paint left over of my previous experiment that's still actually curing and as you can see it's still quite liquidy there's a little bit of skin forming so i really want to use it that's why i'm uh, going to do these four little coasters i did add some tape and made it into a little lip just so the paint gets contained i don't know how it's gonna work i'm just gonna try so let's start with this one and i'm just gonna pour the paint on and see what happens it's already pretty goopy so a good thing i decided to go for this uh, because there's a lot of blobs in here and i think i already put way too much on here so let's hopefully the tape can contain it oh, there's a lot of blobs in here i'm not sure if i want to get a tweezer to pull all these out they're not really blobbies yet. It's just really, really thick paint that's started to cure. So I might just leave it because I don't think it's going to be an issue if I'm carving. So let me spread this paint out evenly and we'll do the next one. So let's pour the second one. So again, I'm going to help this one to get the whole base covered and I'll do the same for the other two. So I poured all four of them and these two I did last and you can see that because the paint is a lot smoother because it was on the bottom of the container so it doesn't contain as much lumps. I still have a little bit left so if I need to do any repair work on these, uh, I have some paint left. So this is going to be sitting here for a couple of months curing and I'll see you when it's time to do some top coats. So I just wanted to show you how they look without the tape it's very interesting to see the sides because it's giving you a little clue at how the carving is gonna look hopefully so this part is the wood and then you've got the paint and you can see i've done uh, a little top coat already with some white but now i'm gonna do the colored top coat and let it dry it's been sitting for a couple months now so it should be fully cured so yeah let's add a top coat and we can finally start carving Let's make a feather together. So this is my design and I think it's not that hard. Please leave a comment down below in the comment sections if you think it's too hard and you want me to do something a little bit easier. I'm happy to try your suggestions. So I just used a soft pencil to uh, color in on the back. This is my preferred way to transfer my design. I've got some other designs planned as well. I've got four of these coasters, so we can have some fun. So let's put our design on. I'm just going to stick it down so it doesn't move. So what I like to do is just take a, a ballpoint um, because the end rolls over the paper and it doesn't destroy your design. And I'm just going to trace my lines. And I'm using a colored one just because that was the one that I'm, I had laying around. You don't have to use colored ones. You can just use a normal blue one. I'm just going to trace all the lines and that should transfer my design to my board. So I just did the main lines. I don't need the inner lines because I'm not sure if I'm even going to do those. The reason is this board wasn't layered the same as I normally do. It's an experiment. So it's going to be fun to see if it actually works. Here you go. That's the design. So what's next? I'm going to be carving using a number one blade. It's the smallest one I have. So this is a number two blade we might be using. So let's start by doing the outlines. I prefer to start with a, a straight line. I'm just going to go quite shallow. I might have to sharpen my blade. I might actually change my blades. Let's see if this one is a little bit sharper. And the reason why um, it's hard to carve when you're not going too deep is because you don't want to push too hard so even if your blade is just slightly dull you're going to get into trouble but i really don't want to go too deep on just my lining so i might just sharpen this one so i just take a piece of leather and got some jeweler's rouge it's for sharpening blades and just rub it on and then go like that and i do it the same with the inside and it should be a little bit sharper. So I just did the middle because we're going to go from the middle to the outside. We're just going to follow this line and let's see how deep we can go. Just try to follow the curve. 
I'm just going to continue. So this is what it's looking right now. I'm just going to do that all the way up and then to the other side as well. Let's do a little bit more together. I'm really trying to do my strokes in one go and I'm still not going very deep because I want to add some details later. I'm also slightly angling my blade. By doing so you get a slightly wider cut. I'm just going to do the same thing all the way up and on the other side as well. So let's do the tiny parts on the bottom. Let's do the letters now because I keep rubbing the pencil lines off of the board with the palm of my hand. On a small piece like this I find it easier to just turn the piece instead of my hand. Again these are just my personal preferences. As you can see I'm still having a lot of issues with my blade skipping but that's just because I don't want to carve too deep. So now I can just carve without rubbing off my design. Let's go back to the feather and carve the center piece. We can do this a little bit deeper because we now know how far we can go into the paint and as you can see now my blade isn't skipping and that's because I'm applying more pressure. I'm really loving how the marbling of the paint is coming through. I just think I need to go a little bit deeper to see if we can get it to come up a little bit more. Let's just try a little area. Now you can see the marbling a lot better but I'm not sure if I like that better or this. But I think I do want to go for it. Let's also make the letters a little bit deeper. Let's also use a different blade. Let me show you which one. This is just a number one blade that I use my pliers on. Because the edges of the blade are a little bit more straight up, you can carve a lot deeper without carving a lot of the sides. So that way your lines still are nice and narrow. I also like using this blade to do textures like fur. I would however just recommend using a cheaper blade and being very careful when you're using your pliers because it could break. I'm pretty sure you can buy some somewhere but I couldn't find it so I made one. I think that looks quite nice. So here's the final product. But I do think it's missing something so I might actually add some with a different technique. So I'm going to try the technique I was talking about. I took some before pictures just in case I mess up but I'm going to be using my Amsterdam Oxide Black and I'm just going to use a really 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 tiny bit so I'm just going to use what's in the cap and I'm actually going to use a really fluffy makeup brush and I'm going to try and dry brush the top area so that the raised edges should turn black. That's why I taped off the sides. I just take a little bit of the black on here and I've got a little paper towel and I'm going to to actually take off almost everything and then I'm just going to go over it. Might need a little bit more paint on here but I want to be very careful. I don't want to put too much. I'd rather just do it several times than mess up the first time. So I don't know if you can see but the top of the edges now are black compared to these. These are still white. So I'm just going to continue and layer this up. So let's take off the tape. As you can see those edges are black so there is black paint on there. And you might think it's not that big of a difference, but it actually does give a really nice effect. So I'm just going to show you the before and after. As you can see I need to do some cleaning but you can clearly see that these areas that used to be green are now black and so are all the ridges. Hopefully you can see it better in this image. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It is the first in a series of four. In this series I'm going to show you a couple of smaller projects just to show you the basics of carving acrylic paint. If you have any questions please leave a comment down below in the comment sections or send me a DM on Instagram. But for now I hope you enjoyed the video and I would love to see you here again. Please consider subscribing and if you want leave a thumbs up if you liked the video. It really does help the channel and for now Thank you for watching and I love to see you in the next one. Bye everyone!